Hello everyone, I'm back with another video. This video is going to focus on the modeling tools in Blender. I'll be going through different examples of how we can use the tools in Blender. This will be a beginner friendly tutorial, so let's get started. We are again in the Blender's default layout and you can see that there are many tools on my left hand side. Let me just switch on the screencast key so that you guys can see what commands I'm using. Now you can see that I have this icon where I can go into any panel that we discussed in the previous video. So we're in the 3D viewport panel now. I'll just import a cube. And you can see that we have different modes here. We have object mode, edit mode, sculpt mode, vertex paint, weight painting, and texture paint. All these modes are object specific that is, and it is only available for mesh models that are present in the viewport. Starting with the object mode, we all have the properties of the highlighted object represented here. So these locations are relative to the world origin. So this distance of the cube in the Y direction is, well, it is what it is. And this is a distance of the cube in the X direction concerning the world origin. The same goes with the rotation. And if you notice that if I rotate this cube randomly, we will have this rotation gizmo. One is a global coordinate system and one is a local coordinate system. The global coordinate system is the world coordinate system. And the global coordinate system is specified specifically for the object. You can see here. If I switch to the local coordinates, you can see the axes are aligned to the faces of the cube. Now if I go to edit mode and rotate the cube randomly, You can see that the local coordinates have changed and the local coordinates can be reverted to normal. So if I change to normal coordinates or a 3D cursor, you have different methods of aligning the objects according to your preferences. We will use these methods while modeling stuff in Blender in further videos. Now let's explore the different tools in edit mode. Some tools in the edit mode are like that of the object mode. So first we have the selection tool. We have three modes in edit mode, that is vertex mode, edge mode, and face mode. We can click on these and choose the respective modes alternatively, and you can just press 1 and 2, and 3, which are below your function keys, to switch between these modes. Going back to the selection tool, if I just drag the selection tool around this vertex, this vertex will be selected. If I want to select these two verticals, then I must drag both verticals into the box. Same goes for the edge and the face. Second, we have a 3D cursor. This tool can be used for referencing objects and models in a blender. So if you want to perform actions concerning a particular coordinate, then this tool is very useful. While this tool is selected, you can just click that would, you know, become the active coordinates for the object, provided the 3D cursor option is selected. Alternatively, you can just press shift right click, place the 3D cursor anywhere in the world. And well, in those world coordinates, you can even press Shift S to get all the options that are available for the 3D cursor. So now you can see that the cube is an active selection. And if I press the cursor to select it, the cursor will be migrating to the selection. If I press selection to cursor with the cube selected and click on the offset, the cube will be migrated to the 3D cursor. Next, we have the transform tool with which we can move the object in the 3D viewport. As I told you earlier, there are two coordinate systems in a blender, global and local. So if we rotate the cube randomly, there are two coordinate systems. One is aligned with the world axis, which is the world coordinates, and the one is the local coordinate. So each has different gizmos and you can move it along the X, Y, and Z axis. Alternatively, you can press G and X to move in the global coordinates. And if you press G and X, Two times you can move the object in local coordinates. Next, we have the rotate tool, which works very similar to the transform tool, and it does what it says. It rotates the object in the respective coordinates that is X, Y, and Z. If you press R and press X, then it will rotate on the X axis with respect to the global coordinate system. Press X two times, and then it will rotate in the local coordinate system. Next is the scale tool and we can press A which will select all the faces and then scale to scale it evenly 
on all the access and we can also press a particular access after pressing S to scale it on the access. The next tool is the combination of all above three. That is the transform rotation and the scale tool. I don't use this tool very much, but if it is useful for you, you can use it. We also have the annotation option in Blender where you can annotate any word or any letter that you want or make some references to a model which you can then use while modeling. Maybe some guidelines. Again, I don't use this tool much, but if it's useful, go for it. We have a measuring tool to measure the distance or length of any dimension in a Blender. So these work on meters now. But you can change it here. And then you can just change it to a kilometer or millimeter or centimeter, wherever you want. And you can also change the rotation to degrees and radians. Next, we have the Add Cube tool, with which you can add cubes and cuboids and give them a particular dimension that you want. This tool can be useful when you're building houses and solid objects, mainly for archives projects. Next, we have the extrude tools with which you can extrude any vertex, edge, or face. And we have different options to define the direction of extrusion. Clicking on this will extrude the face, edge, or vertex. Along any specified direction, if we just click on this tool in Dexter, or you can press E to extrude. Next, we have the insert tool, which, which you can use to insert a face or anything else. So pressing, clicking on this button here, I can insert a face in the model. And then I can use other tools like the extrude tool to extrude the face. The hotkey for this tool is I. If I press I, I can insert faces into face mode. We will have different options as well with the parameters. Next, we have the bevel tool, which bevels the edges of the model and tool, and you can just scroll the mouse wheel to get more edge loops and that will subdivide the faces. The hotkey for this tool is CTRLB. So when you press CTRLB, you can add bevels provided that an edge loop is selected. Next, we have the loop cut tool, which adds more loops to the mesh. So we have this tool here alternatively. You can press Ctrl R to use this tool. So if we hover on the vertical edge and click, you'll get a horizontal edge loop. And if you get it, if you hover on the horizontal edge,